And as he was saying that, I said, because I was thinking of that thought, and then I thought, how many women feel not seen by men, you know, when there's a certain issue where you possibly couldn't hear me mm. because you're a man mm. and your gender is what's causing this not problem. the person that caused yeah. the problem in your life. Hello, 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 and welcome to yet another episode of the Conversation Capital. Do you guys think I need a new intro? No. I get, I get tired of saying <laughs> You can change it. You can change it. <laughs> hello, well, hello, hello. Hello. Let's keep on. Let's keep on, my chance. <laughs> <laughs> well, how are you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm great. Thank you. Give how are you doing? Once again. Yes. <laughs> Welcome back to the chair. <laughs> yes, yes. I'm good. I'm good. I'm great. Thank you. So today is actually all your topic. <laughs> yeah. So I'm yeah, gonna allow you yeah. to introduce it and, and just say yes. It's actually nice when we carry episodes three of us, I must be honest. Yes. It feels so yes. much more chilled and less yes. interview. Yeah, I enjoy it so much. And you guys also enjoy them too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the viewers. The viewers actually yeah. enjoy, yeah. And I think they can just tell the vibe is we are chatting. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. we're really just yeah. chatting. I think we saw it with our get ready with me episodes. Uh, the attitude towards our, our topics. Mm. All right, so we're, we're, we're going to have a conversation around, the, and many of you already have seen it on social media, around the idea of the manosphere. Mm. It's either known as the red pill community mm. or the manosphere. So this is, uh, there's a lot of names on the internet that are at the forefront of these conversations. Um, and a lot of, I mean, it's it's names that bring a lot of, um, emotions yeah emotions reactions. yeah a lot of yeah. people have yeah but we don't want to necessarily talk about them we just want to talk about the idea of the manosphere and the, the red pill community and how they impact society particularly men right so what what the manosphere is it's these men who they uh, a lot of them have some have podcasts but they have these views that what makes a man is someone who has money someone who is physically strong and can protect a woman um, and someone who um, is basically an alpha they they, they have mm -hmm. this every man has to be an alpha mm -hmm. otherwise you're a loser you're going to be depressed mm -hmm. you're going to be worthless within mm -hmm. society mm -hmm. and every woman and th this I, I i i for me anyways i think is the most toxic view of the manosphere community mm -hmm or the Red Pill Society. So just to give you guys context, there's podcasts, right, where these, these you'll find there's like maybe two or three or four guys, and then there'll be like five girls yeah. that they just found outside and brought onto their podcast. And then they challenge them on who's better between men and women, mm. right? That's literally what these podcasts are about. This is not the one where the clip went viral where the guy says, do you read books? And the girl says, yes. And Probably. Then he says, name a book. Yes. And then she can't. No, no, name that one. one. That one. I think it was the fault with a young boy, young looking boy. Yeah. Yeah. But that's basically mm. what those podcasts mm. do. That's exactly it. That's mm. a very good sample. Mm. So they'll ask questions like, name. I think actually you're right. I think that might have been Sneeko. But they'll say things like, name a book, and then they'll count one, one. Wait, wait, no, 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 another one, and then they'll count something that's mm. not, or even name countries. You know, mm. just to they they their to goal shame women. exactly mm. exactly their goal in a lot of these podcasts is to show that women first of all are not as smart as they think they are, mm. and that men go through more sufferings than than women do. Mm. That's literally the arguments they make, um, and uh, arguments on uh, a woman. This is one of the biggest ones I've seen being argued lately that a woman having an inst an Instagram account is basically cheating on her man. Hey, bro. Literally, literally, literally. That's wild. <laughs> right? Wild. Right? And you have... You... What's, what's the argument there? H how? So the idea is around how if you as a woman want, you will uh, equate my value to how much I can provide for you. Right? If you're doing that, mm -hmm. then delete your Instagram account. That's oh, what they're doing, okay. basically. They're like, I also will have my thing. Yes. If yes, you have your demand... demand I'll have, have my, my demand. demand. Because the idea is if a woman's mm. worth and value is in her 
her her appearance mm. and you're taking your appearance and you are basically giving it for free putting giving it, it out there mm. for free mm. it's my appearance <laughs> and, and and i think besides the appearance it it's like you're opening yourself up to being seen by other men so other yes. men can yes. reach you or you're accessible mm. or yeah I, yes. remember, I remember this one time somebody saying oh she's clearly posting pictures that show she's now single when i see the pictures it's just a cute girl hey mm. mom she felt cute you know so that mm. was like wild for me absolutely wild but yes yes i okay so now i'll tell you the the only experience or the, the most lasting experience i've had with the red pill community has been the red pill documentary i don't know if you've watched it oh yes i yes, always yes, talk yes, about yes. it mm. but it was very transformative for me in the sense that i needed to watch that episode it it absolutely it transformed the way it transformed the way I see and look at it opened my eyes to men's struggles as well. Yeah. So, but this is the thing with anything because that documentary is beautiful. It's actually done by a white woman. She conducts the the documentary. So I think she did it in a way that opened up the the conversation to men's struggles as well. Yeah. And this was I remember it was the year when I moved to Johannesburg. It was twenty seventeen. Up to now, mm-hmm. I have not like lost sight like she changed in that one hour and a half she changed the way i view men and men's role and just seeing them more as like humans yes, you know yes. um and so when i heard like the what you were explaining you know even the the link that you had sent for me and bogger to watch yeah the extreme end that it could take it just goes back to how perversified any movement can become yes. when left in the hands of the the i wouldn't even say the masses certain pe- people that the can mom. steer the Yes, so the people that can steer the direction of something really beautiful yeah. and turn it yeah. into something very vile. I do yeah. think that there is a balance because even in that documentary, they speak on the far extreme end of feminism and how vile it can become and how, and this is the part where when we call it feminism, is it really feminism? Is it really the men's rights movement? Yes. Or is it something that is masking itself as such so that we reject the whole movement? Yeah. And this is something we need to be aware of, you know? When, when we start, you know, pointing fingers towards, no, I don't want to be a part of that. Is it that or is it something masking itself as, yes. that. as that? The same goes for religion. I you was know? literally thinking, thinking of, of religion. Exactly that. Yes. 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 You know? yes. Is that really Christianity or is it something masking itself as, as Christianity, Christianity? Mm. and that makes people reject the whole mm. thing? Yeah. And, I don't want to be a part of that. You know, <clears throat> this is a pattern and I remember I've explained mm. it before using the, the that film, the Korean film on Netflix, uh, Squid Games, mm-hmm. how Squid Games became something so popular that everyone, your guard fell yes. because it's Squid Games, it's exciting, mm-hmm. it's trending, mm-hmm. everyone is doing content about Squid Games, mm-hmm. and then suddenly someone launches a, a, a crypto called yes. Squid Games, yes. and everybody invests in it, and yes. it grows, and you're thinking it's legit, and then it just plummets, yes. and people walk away with money. Yes. Now, what, what's different with Squid Games and the things we're talking about is Squid Game happened within such a short space of time. Mm-hmm. It impacted people for that period. Mm -hmm. The thing about things like religion, they've been going on, they've been building momentum for decades Decades. and centuries, right? So you can imagine how much trust people have put into it. So that, and and the point I'm making is everything that builds its reputation and and becomes popular is is at risk of being exploited and used. It becomes the, 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 the wolf, the skin that the wolf used to disguise yeah, itself yes, as a sheep. Yes, you understand? Yes. Yeah. That, and, and for me, I remember the one time I was exposed to what, I, f- I forgot, classic feminism, I think mm-hmm. they call it. Mm-hmm. Um, I definitely could, could be using the wrong term here. But when you listen to those women then and what they were saying and what the, 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 the radical feminists are saying now, they're not the same. Like, you understand what they were fighting for. I remember I was at a, a conference at UNISA, and I'm really not getting into a topic on, about feminism, mm-hmm. but li- really I'm just trying to make the point that these, the, all of these things move with the good intention of trying to bring balance within society, yes. acknowledging that there's a fault and trying yes. to fix the fault. Yes. And because everyone now saw this being fixed, we all started believing in it. Yes. And then the nefarious ones come up come to push up. an agenda exactly yes mm. and like, we're seeing it on both extreme ends yes mra men's rights activists mm-hmm. yes, mra yes, yes. versus um you know uh like the, the feminist movement yes and yeah. you, you can see the radicals that push it like 
uh, yes you know yes very far end like things that actually that's actually you know we're, yeah. we're not negating yeah. anybody's struggle how can we share both struggles mm. how can we really listen really really listen so we move in a forward direction but it goes back to for me always pointing out that when you deal with humans you're dealing with a, a, a plethora of things you're dealing with somebody's natural like way that they were brought up in a way to react to yeah. things and yeah. some people's thing is you must fight <clears throat> you yes. know exactly before you can take a st- stand and listen and engage some people's first reaction is to push back and push hard exactly the harder exactly. you push and that's something to consider people's traumas somebody else is standing on the far end of feminism because of how much trash men they've experienced mm, and that's mm. something you need to take into account when they comment but you know these are things that you know so i always say nobody's standing there saying i want to destroy the world yeah, nobody's doing yeah, that yeah everybody's yeah. genuinely trying to put their best foot forward and really build a community that's changing well when i say everybody i would hope Maybe this is a very innocent way. I mean, that some I men think. just want to. By men, I mean people uh, want to uh. see the world burn, right? <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> yes, yes. I hear you. I hear you. Yeah. You know, but you would hope that it, it maybe it's not the majority. Definitely, of yeah. the society. Yeah, we can you know? definitely and say, so those yeah. are things we need to take into account when somebody does bring their uh, opinion to the table. And sometimes it's a bit too left field or a bit yes. too right field. Yes. Consider where it is that they're coming from. What is it there? Because you you've seen when you enter into a discussion with someone and the emotions go. Boom. You can't engage anymore. Exactly. There's nothing to talk about. Exactly. Because there's something else that you're going through that I'm not a part of. Exactly. You know, and that I don't bring to the table. Yeah. You know, I'm I'm yeah. actually I'm I'm not saying that I am not victim of the society. Mm-hmm. Right? As a woman, we all are. Mm-hmm. Or as a man, mm-hmm. we mm-hmm. all are. Yeah. Right? But I can engage in it in, in a way that is still that I'm not overcome by my emotions, right? There's also hormones. Emotions. The moon is here. What is in retrograde? Where is Mercury is in retrograde? Where is Mercury at the point of this conversation? I've really learned to yeah, take those things into yeah. because I've seen myself mm. during ovulation. Yeah. I've seen myself three, four days saying, hey, I don't think I would have responded the same way if, today. Exactly, mm. exactly, Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. And then I say, where was Mercury three days ago? <laughs> I hear it's also got an effect on how I respond yeah, to certain things. Yeah, yeah. You know, and so... There, there's so many nuances when we look at and when we engage in very sensitive topics. Topics, yeah. You know, and this is definitely one of those things. It's it's easily something that you know once you start it, it's like a spark. Like everybody gets exactly. triggered so quickly to the point where we can't just chat. Yeah, you know, one thing that I am afraid of with regards to this community of mm-hmm. men, you know, they've, first of all, they've become heroes. Yes. to young men and young boys. Yes. One of the most prominent of them, you know, Mr. AT, mm-hmm. <laughs> right? One of the most prominent of them is commonly known for being followed by 12-year-olds. Mm-hmm. This is a man who's currently being has been indicted. He's facing criminal charges. Mm-hmm. I'm not talking about whether he's guilty or not. That has nothing to do with it. Yes. My point is the fact that he is currently being followed by 12 year olds and he's telling them that as a man you need to be strong as a man you 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 mean nothing unless you have money Mm -hmm. as a man a woman needs to listen to you you know that's what he's instilling within those 12 year old boys Mm -hmm. and it makes me very concerned as to what kind of men will Mm -hmm. him as well as the other leaders that they mm. follow, because there's quite a few of them, yes. right? How, what kind of young men and boys will they breed? Because mm. this thing we've, we, we've spoken about quite often uh, of parasocial relationships mm. and the influence they have mm. on you as an individual, yes. it goes deep. Especially with the younger ones, because yes. unlike us, they spend way more time on social media they than spend, us. Yeah, they spend, and they're also at an era where they are highly influential. Yes. Yes. That, that is the part where you, you're molding the tree. True. So it falls True. and it bends. And then once it's kind of gone in a certain direction at a certain age, it's kind of going on that trajectory. Yeah, exactly. You, you can't done, take an old it. tree and bend it. Yes, yes it's the young yes. tree that you bend, and we all know that principle, you mm. know. And like, how much influence are they having? But this is for me, and I know that I always use this example, and I love it because I, I, I heard it, you know. But it had nothing to do with what we're talking. Well, it has everything to do with what we're talking about. But it's an example of how, from the physical, it can trickle into the mental part of molding the next generation or bringing in vile things from a previous generation that actually don't have to be translated over into the next generation yeah that being of um like the whole hiv thing 
mm-hmm. if we're stopping mother to, to child trans Mission. fusion, yeah, transmission of uh, HIV and AIDS, oh, right? Oh, oh, oh. We should actually be entering into a generation where it, it doesn't exist. Yes. Why yes. does it still exist? Mm. That's because, you know, the whole sugar daddy and now the teenage girls. Mm. Now bringing it from another generation. Mm, I see what you're saying. In a physical example, we see how even conditioning young people incorrectly is bringing an old struggle into a Passing new world. Yes. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. How many things are being translated over and over into newer generations that don't have to be there? Exactly. Right? The barriers of knowledge are there. Mm. But because mm. of one grown adult influencing a 12 year old, it will now drag Continue. into the next generation. You know, when the whole society is working to rid it, but one adult, one 75 year old person with that mentality, yeah, making sure that yeah. they influence at least 500 <clears throat> of the next generation, you know, even skipping maybe their children, but moving on straight to their children's children. Exactly. And influence. Exactly. I'm not saying that, you know, we, they cannot share wisdom with, I'm not saying all oh, old people keep quiet. Oh, yeah. no, 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 no. <laughs> but I'm saying how many things are sifting into the next generation that actually don't need to sift. And, you know, given as you speak, I can't remember if it's you who said this or another podcast, but I think um, the fact that the messages of the um, of the manosphere mm-hmm. are, are as widespread and as viral as they are because someone is finally talking to men. Exactly. Was exactly. you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You there, said that. Yeah, look, it, there's a lot of people who hold that opinion and many podcasts that have said that as well. Mm. Like, honestly speaking not a, men are so deprived of someone recognizing yeah. their struggles as struggles yeah that when the wrong people come and say listen this is a struggle my brother mm. it means something yeah right mm. um it's like the conversation we were having um about um you know when when um i forgot what's what's goth Mm-hmm. Right, Garth talking about how when he finally met someone who had been to through what he's gone through, mm-hmm. right? He finally was like he cried, he mm-hmm. wept. The both of them cried. Right, yes. exactly. And the thing is, and, and I feel women have that quite often where yes. you get with each other and you recognize yes. each other's struggles. Yes. Like we we see, I mean, as men, we see um um menstrual events mm-hmm. happening all over breastfeeding um, Mm. groups whenever um, you a mother gives birth there's like a whatsapp group Mm. where we share each other experience when you lose a child there are groups Mm. you understand Mm. i've never seen such a group to Mm. this day Mm. you understand what i mean Mm. like i've never had a group that invited me and said oh you've just become a father come Mm. join us let's Mm. and you can understand how it feels to someone who's like me and many other men out there when they hear and i can tell you there are men like for example uh, jordan peterson is one of them mm-hmm. like the way he speaks about men's struggles mm-hmm. and i love how he speaks because he has a tendency to have balance right mm-hmm. he'll say he understands that men go through this men work bend their backs go to war and die and are expected by society to carry financial financial burdens while at the same time being able to confront you and saying, if women don't like you, it's not their fault. Fix yourself. Find out what it is they don't like about you and work on it. Even to something as practical as saying, make your bed in the morning. Yes, yes. Those are the type of things that mm. you'll find him talking about, mm. right? And I feel like he's, I mean, you, you might, he might be not... He might not be perfect, obviously, because he's a human being, Mm. uh, but for the most part, his message is a lot more balanced, Mm. right? It speaks to the things that men are struggling with, and it speaks to the things where men need to now start picking themselves up and not saying, oh, woe is me. Yes, yes. And I hear what you're saying, speaking directly towards what somebody is going through can easily indoctrinate them into what you want yes. and pull them very left field True. because you're saying, man, I see you. And you're like, damn, you do see me. You do understand the struggle of, I mean, one of the things that the Red Pill documentary opened up to me was just the struggle around um, men not being viewed as primary caregivers and yes. how that affects during divorce, yes. separation, how automatically the child belongs to the mom. And the father is the one with now limited rights when to see the child. And you'll find that maybe when they were together, the man was actually the one who was primarily taking care of the baby and more invested and a better parent, you know, more skilled parent, whatever we want to call it. But immediately, according to law, well, the mom needs to be with their child. And, and, you know, and then now being seen by another man who's been through that, 
who can pull you all the way left field into a space where to the point where you even feel like as you were saying because i see how men can even feel like you can possibly cannot see my struggle because you're actually the source of my pain even if not you yeah your gender is the source of my pain mm. how many do you get what i'm saying mm. how how many disconnects are there like that with men where like even Ursula saying friend let me hear you i can hear you friend yeah you know but you're like no you're your gender the problem, is, the problem. is the problem not my wife yeah or your gender that's how far left you've been pulled yo, by yo, the struggle yo, yo. Yeah, do you get what i'm yeah. saying and as you were saying that i said cuz i was thinking of that thought and then i thought then how how many women feel not seen by men you know when there's a certain issue where you possibly couldn't hear me mm. because you're a man mm. and your gender is what's causing this not problem. the person that caused yeah. the problem in your life but that gender now becomes a representative of your pain you know and then now there's this huge disconnect Oof, you're explaining something so deep dude thank you <laughs> 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 right but yeah 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 you know. I've, i've been thinking about that a lot hey because you find that every every time you you there there are these conversations mm. about you, you know you get a lot of level headed people like the the mm. video that i sent mm. you guys yes. like who sort of take all of these things and culminate them and then mm. sort of drag you towards the let me say towards the center yes. yeah mm. towards the place yes. of point of balance mm. uh, what what I, what i've seen a lot that tends to happen with with a lot of conversations about men and women is that automatically people assume that it it's it's us versus them mm. it's like every time if we were to have a, a, an ep- well we have actually mm. and you've seen not a lot of people fortunately on our platform mm. because i think it's also because we kind of make it clear that we're not saying men are the pro- mm. men are, mm. you know we mm. on, don't point at yes. either side yeah. but when you go on particularly these manosphere platforms you'll see it in the comments in fact it's to such an extent that i can easily tell someone who's influenced by the uh, the, the influences from that those communities yes. through what they comment on other spaces spaces oh. that have nothing, nothing to, to do, do with that you know like i don't know if you know uh, this guy kevin samuels he's passed on now yeah um yeah kevin samuels used to use this term high value men or high value women yes. he popularized that term yes. right and when you look read comments and you see someone use mm. say to you you're a high value woman mm. no they were influenced by, by that guy yes, either yes. directly or through people who mm. were influenced by that yes, guy yes. because no one where have you ever heard someone say high, high value, value yeah. woman mm. high value and it's such it's such um, manipulate manipulating words who doesn't want to be high value you know exactly. what i mean like just eliminate all the conditions <laughs> around the, it the, 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 the videos on that mm. fly like yes. if a girl says like how cakes. to be a, a high value woman, woman. Yes. what even is that what even is that mm. can i be a human <laughs> <laughs> we are all valuable yes. and we all hold value and high yeah. value because i was yeah. created yeah. you know yeah. yeah and yes i come with my flaws and i come with my errors but can i be seen for them and can i see you for them and can yeah. we i'm not talking you know and maybe this is all in a very idealistic world and somebody can say that's very airy fairy but why not gun for the airy fairy why not gun for the perfect i get you why I is it that you. it must be i you're thinking of a dream world why not yeah because i mean why do you let's say take him for example the guy who was making these videos so he granted and to be fair a lot of his videos where he it feels like he's he's being harsh on women mm. went viral mm. but the ones where he was speaking to men and saying you all need to fix this mm. did not go viral mm. and it's like people enjoyed seeing a man go after women mm. and they just made those videos go viral mm. and also consider youtube is 80% men wow. right that's another dynamic that we don't consider really? that's all, yeah 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 youtube wow. globally is 80% men number 1 Hence when you start a YouTube channel that's mostly followed by women you actually get more money from YouTube because you've women are rare market, yeah. and they convert quicker than men. Mm. <laughs> wow. Yeah, you actually get more. I would have never more. thought. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. See, Remember this is you... why he's the guy behind everything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Production here we go. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I mean this I mean if you think about it it makes mm. sense. YouTube started as a platform where dudes were coming to make prank videos. Yes. Okay. They were playing video okay. games. Okay. They were doing, you know, silly mm. videos and mm. yeah, they, they were just coming to 
be use it as an outlet mm. and that's why many guys flocked onto mm. the platform and then not that long ago then women started joining mm. because things started shaping up and looking more professional and accommodating mm. women. yeah but i'm wondering how many things are are we missing out on in an inability to integrate with the opposite sex completely do you get what i'm saying in mm, an inability mm. to live in a society where we see each other as equals mm. what are we missing out on what collaborations Ooh, are we missing I out see on what you yes. mean. do you get, do you get what, what i'm what saying mean, like yeah. what what how much more could we expand mm. you know it's, it's almost like you know these things that are done uh, the uh, where taraj p henson plays that black woman who goes and works for nasa yes you know had they invited women into the spaces, the Marie Curies earlier, yes. how much more could, could we have yeah, done had we genuinely yeah. been seeing the opposite sex as an equal, huh. a partner that can think, that can, you know, see emotion and respect somebody's emotion and what they're going through? Yes. You know, yes. what, how, where, how far could we be? You know, but I think the creator, whatever you believe in, God, Allah, whatever you believe in is fantastic in the way that we still need each other yeah exactly <laughs> exactly so exactly it's a big war but <laughs> not was, just yeah. not just to procreate uh, but even in mm. in the element of human beings just being social creatures mm. there is something you get from speaking to a man that you can't get from a woman that's right true. It, it might be something you can live without granted yeah but there is something that comes from no that and also just the, the knowing that when you are in a certain space that's not safe and there are men around who yeah, can protect you, absolutely. right? And vice versa. Like there's mm -hmm. just something, us guys, we know, we can only open up to each other up to a certain point. Mm -hmm. Then we just start blinking. Die, my brother, you're going too deep <laughs> yes, now. <laughs> yes. Where you need your girl. Yeah, you know what you I mean? You need your girl to exactly, go to that deep place. Exactly, exactly. Ooh. You know what I mean? Ooh. So there are, there, are, there are certain, and here's another thing, you know, it's, and this is exactly what I was bringing up when you were talking about, when you were starting the conversation on how, you know, we, 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 we always just against each other. Mm. It's like almost like women versus mm. men, yes. rather than learning that we, act, we can actually use each other's strengths. Yes, yes. You absolutely. You understand what I mean? If we used each other, yes, I, yes. I don't mean the word yes. in a bad yes, way. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> right? If yeah. we worked more on collaborating and seeing <clears throat> each other, how much more could we achieve? Yes. And I'm thinking you know. about just um, the boy child, you know, mm. maybe if there was more collaboration and um, men would see themselves in a more, I don't want to say lighter, but more inclined to the emotion side. Um, and they would raise, we would raise better boys because of that. Mm -hmm. Men would think of their role very differently in the home. Mm -hmm. Um, if we were to co be on a more collaborative equal, then mm -hmm. I'm not any less of if I am the primary caregiver or if my role is very intimate to the raising of whether the boy child or the girl child now, now that I think about it. But you know what I'm thinking of as we're speaking, I'm just thinking, how do we say this though? somebody who's listening and we're talking about this collaborative effort but how do we say this to somebody whose life's agony has been caused by a man mm. do you know what i'm saying yeah, uh, yeah how do you say this to somebody whose life's agony has been caused by a woman yeah i i understand your question completely yeah because it's easy now we're on a podcast yes we're not staring in the face of someone who's of discrimination. just had like the most traumatic experience yes. At you the know, mercy of a man. Exactly. Or at the mercy of, of a woman. A woman, exactly. You know. Yeah, we're not here standing next to Tyler Perry. Yes. Who, who, who had a, a woman basically sexually violate yes. him. Yeah. Yes. You understand? And saying that to mm, his face. Mm, mm. You know? So even as we talk, I, I, I see the background of why we're here. You know, why we're here. But like, it's the part where... How do we get out of this? And how do we yeah. translate the message in such a way? Like sometimes, you know, with contentious topics, I feel like saying, just hear me for a second. Listen, like really try to listen yeah. for a second and really, you know, stretch beyond your trauma, but it's not easy. And that's such a difficult thing to navigate, right? Because it, it, there's so much that goes in, let's say, for example, right? I've, I'm, I know myself to be a bit of an assertive person. Mm. So sometimes I come across as though I am being, let's say someone had, has gone through a traumatic experience mm. and I'm trying to have that calm, mm. gentle conversation mm. with them. Mm. But my tone comes across to them as though I'm being overly assertive and I'm not understanding. Mm. 
You understand? Mm. I mean, not to uh, there. I can bring myself mm. down and mm. you know listen mm. and mm. etc. I've learned to, mm. anyways. But you can Thank imagine. Thank you, Nessa. That's all <laughs> Nessa's work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, not definitely credit, credit where credit is due, right? But what I'm the point I'm trying to make is that there are so many factors that come into play when you're trying to communicate things. One of the biggest ones being your cultural context. Yes, absolutely. Right? Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, there are certain... And you won't even realize... There's a friend of mine, actually. Um, oh, no, let me not say. Yeah, because he's yeah, been here before. Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> okay. I, I would, I I would rather I would rather have <laughs> mm -hmm. them come and mm -hmm. actually say, mm -hmm. yeah. Their cultural context is very um, um, patriarchal, yes. right? They come yeah. from a very patriarchal... Yeah. Uh, I mean, even in the country, it's law mm -hmm. that if, if, if you're married and your wife gives birth, your children belong to the man. He can mm -hmm. leave the country with your children mm. and you can't question that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's law. Yeah, it, it, you don't even debate mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. Your children belong to your husband. So you can I mean, even if you think about... Uh, sorry to interrupt you, but no if you problem. think about how... The idea of a child taking the woman's surname is completely offensive to any man. Yes. Yeah. That's another thing, yeah, actually. Yeah, like any man would be like, <laughs> what ring? <laughs> you know, immediately. You know, you know where I'm, I'm, I'm just short, mm. just quickly, quickly mm. getting into that. For me, the, the surname thing, if I were ever to be like, okay, fine, my wife, you don't have, don't take my surname. You better just let me not pay Lobola. <laughs> right it has to be give or take we have you have to be losing something that i'm losing something you know i'm not saying that we pay lobola for the surname <laughs> but i feel like if I, you're gonna take me through the process of coming to your family mm. sitting them down paying lobola mm. and them tasting which mm. you are the one who needs to look after her and mm. it's not the other way around then let her take my surname. But I, I wonder <laughs> if all those things aren't, isn't what has created. Imagine, and this is the part where like, do we really allow ourselves to think outside of the box as to what things can be done? Mm -hmm. Or are we too used to the way they are done that the conversation becomes whose surname must the child take? What if each family that went and cleaved and started something created a new surname? Actually. What if you and the your partner, both of you didn't give, a, a, you know, either one takes the dad's surname or the mom's surname but it literally became this person is a new yeah and yeah. and they're of this new family mm, you know and really mm. just leaving and cleaving and starting your own unit and creating a new surname what i'm getting at is like how how much are we dragging things from the norm that we, it doesn't even allow us to think outside, outside of, the of the box i to completely think understand of something what you mean. else a different yeah. way of doing it <clears throat> you know what if i gave my child name and surname with my partner mm. and we created a new say what if every family created a new surname yeah you know? that's a very good question because mm. also considering that surnames were never always a thing yeah. the surnames mm. have became very functional at a certain yes. point because yes. it became very difficult to mm. distinguish between John from there and John from there. Mm. Makes sense that you'd yes. say John Doe. Yes, right? yes. It makes sense. And also, it just happened to come with that thing of honoring your family yes. by taking their surname. Yes. <laughs> the, you know, because I don't want to lie, even with me, call me Ursula anytime. But once you say Ursula Mariani, yeah. that's a whole. You're, you're calling me with everything in me, yeah. You know, and yeah, you're calling yeah. now a whole lineage that I come from, and I feel the need to represent. I get you, you know, because I, I am you. a Mariani. You mm. know, even when I call my sisters, it's you're a Mariani girl, man. What's wrong with you? You know, <laughs> you're calling them to order using the surname where we yeah. come from. You know, and is that right in itself? You know, that's a very good question. You, oh. but it all adds up to the context that then then come into play when we are trying to interact mm. because the reason i was mentioning my the friend of mine mm. is because I, and i don't know if you guys have ever experienced this right mm. when you're when you, there are certain cultural contexts where remember we've actually spoken mm. about this when ubonga mentioned that um even as a man if you're if you don't have a job and gunom sebenzi at home like your opinion only matters this much yes. if you don't have a job. Mm. Yeah. You understand? Mm. And there are certain cultural contexts where that's a thing. Like I've sat between a person who were somewhat the same age, mm. but because of the context they come from, because they're slightly older, their culture has told them that you are supposed to dominate the conversation. Mm. So you can see it, even in the way mm. they posture themselves. Mm. When it's like, dude, we're friends. What are you doing? Uh, <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? No one mm. from your country is watching yes. you here. <laughs> or, or honestly, the friend with money in the clique. Thank yes. you. Yes. They never go yes. by ice. 
That's why it's called an ice boy. <laughs> Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I know exactly what you mean. <laughs> exactly what you mean. Mm. So you can imagine all of those dynamics come into play when now we're trying to just meet as men and women. Yes, let's talk. I still have that thing. Yes. You're a woman, I'm a man. Yes. True. There are dynamics that mm. we, we, you, you might not realize to what extent they're embedded mm. within you, mm. but they influence the, the extent to which we understand each other's struggles. Mm, absolutely. Yo, I even remember this one time, this guy really just trying to patronize me so much. Mm. And he was really just intimidated by me. But I remember he had a beautiful voice even singing to me, it's a man's world at oh work. And like, just very like, screw you, I said what I said. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a man's world deal. And that thing never leaves me that I couldn't get through to this guy. Mm. My comment was basic. And it wasn't that I didn't see him, mm. you know, but he came forward to remind me that I said what I said. It's Ooh. a man's world. And in that context, I was like superior to him. Yeah. You know, and yeah. it basically, in spite of that, girl, it's a man's, it's a man's world, world. You know? Yeah. And, and, and just like seeing those dynamics of like how it's so difficult to, to then break into just the conversation. Mm. You mm. know, there's so mm. many layers. Just before we have the conversation, mm. there's so many layers that we have to break exactly. through the cultural background, the traumas, the emotions, the conditioning. That the conversation never happened. Mm. Yeah. The squabbles happen. And it, it's blocked by those boundaries. Yes. Yeah. Oh, guys, I actually loved this episode. <laughs> and we could do this the whole day. Right. Somehow men and women's <laughs> conversations, they always going to yeah. trigger and touch us also. And we can yeah. all think of a situation that you think, mm-mm. That was definitely the play between man and woman. Yes. Mm. You yeah. know, and even yeah. when you enter into spaces, Bonga, you enter into space, you see women, and you immediately feel safe. I do. Enter into space where you see men only. Mm-mm. Even taxis. <laughs> you know? When you enter a taxi, yes. when I look at a taxi and it's just men, yes. I'm immediately skeptical. Going back to why representation is important. Yeah. Mm. Seeing somebody that looks like you. Yeah. Yes. It does something for your psyche that says, it, I'm yeah, safe here. Yeah. You know, mm. I'm safe here. I'm seen here. I think we've covered as much as we can today. Mm. Definitely haven't covered it all, but please do share your opinion. I think this is definitely, is it possible to strike a balanced ground? Is it possible to have balanced conversations mm. where you're not far left and you're not far right? And you're a man seeing a woman as somebody that can comfort you, mm. you know, and not mm. only finding solace in other men specifically. And as a woman, not only finding solace in other, as a woman, can you confide in a man about how you've been raped? Or do you need to specifically do that with other women to feel safe? Mm. You know, can we enter into spaces where humans are doing wrong things and not necessarily the man, or the woman, the, woman, or the, yeah. the black, the white. the white? Can we ever get there? I don't know. We'll see. Please continue to like, share, and subscribe. That was today's episode of the Conversation Capital. We'll be seeing you guys very, very soon. Catch next week's episode. And I've already said like, share, subscribe. Yeah. Love you guys so much. Goodbye and God bless.